In this example, we'll evaluate a tension member that is made up of a six inch wide by one inch thick bar made out of A572 grade 50 steel. The bar is connected to a gusset plate by six seven eighths inch diameter bolts arranged in two rows as is shown. The load, P, is made up of a dead load of 33 and a half kips and a live load of 100 kips. Our goal in the problem is to evaluate whether the member is adequate for this loading using the LRFD philosophy. The fundamental equation that we evaluate is that the sum of gamma times Q should be less than or equal to phi times R sub n. Or in other words, the factored loading should be less than the factored resistance for the member. As a first step, let's determine the required strength by evaluating the load combinations. The first load combination, 1.4 times the dead load, results in a required strength of 46.9 kips. And the second load combination, 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the live load, results in 200.2 kips. So the required strength for this member is the sum of gamma times Q is equal to 200 kips. As a first step, let's take a look at Table 2-5 from the AISC Steel Construction Manual to determine what the material properties are that we should be using for this evaluation. Zooming in a little bit, you can see that for a plate that has a thickness greater than 3 quarters of an inch up to and including 1 and a quarter inches, that the preferred material properties could be either A36 or A572 grade 50. For this problem, we'll assume that the material is A572 grade 50. We'll take the yield stress F sub Y equal to 50 KSI and the tensile stress F sub U equal to 65 KSI. The first limit state that we'll evaluate is that of gross section yielding or tension yielding as it's known in the AISC specification. The nominal strength with respect to gross section yielding is P sub N equal to F sub Y times A sub G. And we'll evaluate this on the gross cross section of the member. That is a section that's about one and a half to two times the major dimension of the member away from the connection. So in this case, the major dimension is six inches. So we draw that section about nine to 12 inches away from the first row of bolts where we can expect there to be a uniform distribution of stress on the section. Taking a look at this cross section, the gross section, we can see that the gross area, A sub G, is equal to the gross width times the thickness of the plate. Substituting into our equation for the nominal strength, we see that P sub N is equal to 50 KSI times six inches in width times one inch in thickness, which gives us a nominal strength of 300 kips. When we apply the resistance factor, 0.9 for gross section yielding, we see that the design strength phi times P sub N is equal to 270 kips. The second limit state that we'll examine is that of a net section fracture or tensile rupture as it's known in the AISC specification. The nominal strength with respect to a net section fracture is P sub N is equal to F sub U times A sub E, the tensile stress times the effective net area, or that can be rewritten as F sub U times U times A sub N, where U is the shear lag reduction coefficient and A sub N is the net area. The net area is evaluated at the net section, which in this case is in the first row of bolts as you move from the gross section into the joint of the member. Taking a look at that cross section, the net section, the net area A sub N is taken as the gross width minus the sum of the effective diameters of the holes that are made for the bolts multiplied by the thickness of the plate. When we subtract the effective diameters from the gross width of the plate, we refer to that as the net width of the plate. And so then A sub N is equal to W net times T sub P. When we evaluate the net width for this situation, we take the gross width of six inches and we subtract out the material removed for the fabrication of two bolt holes. The effective diameter for those holes is the diameter of the bolt, seven eighths in this, in this case, plus a sixteenth of an inch because the hole is a sixteenth of an inch larger than the bolt for a seven eighths inch diameter bolt. And then we add on a second sixteenth of an inch for material that could possibly be damaged during the fabrication of the hole. So ultimately we end up with a net width of four inches. When we multiply by the plate thickness, we get the net area, which is four inches squared. 
Looking at table J3.3 from the 2022 edition of the AISC specification, we can see that standard holes for bolt sizes up to and including 7 8 are 1 16th of an inch larger than the diameter of the bolt. However, standard holes for bolt sizes larger than 7 8 are 1 8th of an inch larger than the diameter of the bolt. Next, we turn to table D3.1 out of the AISC specification to determine the shear lag reduction coefficient for this bar. Looking at the different options, we see that case one is the case that applies to our situation. Zooming in a bit, you can see that case one is described as a situation where all tension members, where the tension load is transmitted directly to each of the cross-sectional elements by fasteners or welds. In our case, we have a bar that's made up of one element. That element is bolted directly to the gusset plate. So in this case, all of the elements of the cross section are directly connected. Thus, in this case, U is equal to one. So taking U equal to one and substituting into our equation for the effective net area, A sub E, we see that the effective net area in this case is equal to four inches squared. Finally, we can substitute in to, to determine our nominal strength, P sub N, and we find that that's equal to 260 kips. And then we can apply the resistance factor of 0.75 for net section fracture and find that the design strength, phi times P sub N, is equal to 195 kips. In summary, we determined that the gross section yielding design strength, phi times P sub N, is 270 kips and that the net section fracture design strength, phi times P sub N, is 195 kips. The lower of these two values is the, the, the limit state that governs the strength, and so our available strength for this bar is 195 kips. Recall that the required strength was 200 kips, so this member is not sufficient to carry the loads.